So Iron head to head video for you today. We've got an underdog. It's the Shrixen ZX7. Beautiful forged iron from Shrixen, but sometimes overlooked, I think, as a brand for the golf clubs uh, in particular. And that's gonna go up against the premium, and probably the market lead in this forged iron category. Yeah, you guessed it, it's the Mizuno Pro, and it's the 223 model. So two stunning looking irons, both of them providing a little bit of forgiveness. I'm gonna put them head to head in this particular test. And do stay tuned to the end of this video, because I'm gonna do an actual test on the golf course on the simulator here five shots each let's see which one is on average closer to that pin okay so we're going to jump straight into it and we're going to start off with the Shrixen so the ZX7 for me Shrixen as a lineup I played these in the past beautiful irons really really nice irons but sometimes I think may often overlooked you might not find them in all the stockists as you maybe sort of see with TaylorMade and you've sort of bigger brands in a way but obviously we know they're very very good with the golf ball Brooks Kepler obviously uses the ZX7 in, in his bag so Obviously a high quality iron and I'm be interested to pop this up against the 2T3 of the Mizuno. Very similar sort of bracket, these two irons. Let's get his first one hit with the, the ZX7. A little bit of a skinny one to start off with. Now the looks down by that golf ball with this iron is it's a, it's a really nice sort of compact sort of head. It's a medium top line. It's not too thin by any means. A tiny little bit of offset. We've got the satin sort of finish of the toe and the heel area. So there's no high chrome polish until you turn it around the back we've just got a little bit of edging of that polished section which looks quite nice now we've got a little bit of mass behind that hitting area which is obviously going to help a little bit with that sort of ball speed off the club face big talking point really uh, with Shrixen is this turf interaction with the v-sole there and then also we've got this little bit of section that's sort of taken away from the heel and the toe so it's all about getting that real premium sort of turf interaction on that golf course that's a nice strike Lovely high flight and a really good sound. It's that forged feel off the club face. It's that muted sound that would see nothing clicky off that face. So it's 10, 20 miles sort of carbon steel, which is forged, giving us that lovely feel. That's a nice shot. Just slightly down that left side, but beautiful sound, beautiful feedback through that club head. A little bit pulley from me. Get that little bit of extra ball speed. I'm just slightly close. That's just me a little bit of a weak one at the moment. That little bit of a pull just shut that face, pumps that ball speed up, just drops the spin a tiny bit. Does make it go a little bit further on those pulls, as we know. So this 7 iron is coming in at 32 degrees of loft. So it's a little bit on that stronger side, but nothing too obviously ridiculous. Uh, maybe seen at other brands. The 7 iron and the 223 is going to be exactly the same at 32 degrees. We've got both the same shaft in these, same length. So makeups are absolutely identical as well as the loft. Off. So this is quite a nice, real direct comparison. Yeah, and again, there's that feedback through the strike. Really nice sound and that connection. Lovely sort of ball flight, nice and high. And obviously, the beauty of these sort of irons is you can start to manipulate ball flight. Maybe a little bit easier, maybe your game improvement iron. So if you want to sort of knock that flight down, obviously a little bit of change in technique controlling a little bit that loft delivery through impact obviously we can easily sort of knock these ball flights down but i like the fact that it comes out relatively high there on that ball flight we know we've got some good stopping power oh it's a little bit heel but there's a feedback through the club i know i've not flushed that i'll have a little bit of a drop off probably there on that particular shot ball speed down a little bit spins popped up because of that a little bit low heel strike now in these irons you've, we've got a little bit of tech in there not a huge amount but a little bit of that tungsten plug in the toe section you can probably just see that slight shaded area there and that comes in the four iron up to the seven iron those longer irons just to help with a little bit of that forgiveness in terms of those slight miss hits and then as you move into the short irons that plug disappears as more of those sort of scoring irons okay so switching over mizuno pro 223 obviously some massive hype with these irons beautiful irons love these in the review video done obviously they've got the family of the mizuno pros which are really really stunning but this one sits in the middle of the 223 it's got that cavity at the back a little bit of tech in there but again it's a very similar category to what we've just been hitting there with that zx7 so again 32 degrees of loft in that seven iron and I think the look of that, again, down by the golf ball, it's pretty similar look, I would say, you know, in terms of that head length, let's get these two side by side for a more direct comparison. Yeah, so probably quite similar in that blade length. Maybe the Strix looks to be a little bit shallower on the actual face itself, just in that first look, but the shaping's very sort of similar. Top edge, mm, you might just say it's a touch thinner with the Mizuno. It looks a touch thinner, a little bit more beveled off that back edge, which makes it look a little bit thinner. But again, really good look down by that golf ball. 
and there's that feel straight away off that club face. Beautiful, beautiful feel there. And obviously the Mizuno has this layers of feel as they're calling it. They've got the copper underlayer there before that nickel plating goes on above it. So possibly provide a little bit of that more softer feel. Very, very difficult possibly to, to really, you know, if you did a blind test, I'm just thinking there without the copper there or with the copper, could you feel that? I'm, I don't know, maybe you could. At the end of the day, they do feel good. Oh, a little bit low in the face, but it's bullet straight. Nice on the accuracy side of things. Come out a little bit lower. We'll lose a little bit of ball speed with that strike, but not a huge amount of distance there compared to Shrix. I think it spins up a tiny bit with that slight low strike. So I think if you're in a market for an iron that looks, looks like that sort of tour appearance down by that golf ball, you know, relatively compact on the head, looks very similar to a blade, not quite as thin as a blade and not quite as compact, but very, very close to it. Yet you've got, when you turn it around, you've got that cavity in there. And we've got a little bit of tech actually happening in the club, you know, with some tungsten in there. We've got a little bit of a micro slot in these long grinds in the Mizuno. We've got the tungsten in the toe of the Shrixons there. Just those subtle little things helping to just maybe help with a little bit of that forgiveness in those areas. So this is where I think these irons are, are very, very popular because the, the desirable look down by that golf ball for a lot of golfers, but you've just got that little bit of help. Oh, that's a good strike. That's the best strike there. That's a lovely ball flight. Great feel. Is that a better feel than that Shrixen? Ooh, I tell you what, it's a tough one to call because they both feel really, really good. Ooh, that's a little bit out of that toe. Feel that. Again, feedback's there. It's flown pretty straight. There's a little bit of a drop off. Not a huge amount there, which is good. So I think we've got to talk price point with these two irons because they are slightly different. So four to pitching wedge, seven iron set in a steel shaft with a Shrix and is going to come in at £9.99. And with the Mizuno 223, it's going to come at £1249. So it's £250 more expensive for the Mizunos. Lovely, really enjoyed hitting that. Feels good, looks good. Got that little bit of forgiveness behind you as well. So, okay, so let's check a few numbers out between those two clubs. And then straight after that, we're gonna go into the shootout on the simulator, on the golf course, five shots with each. And we're gonna see which one is averaging the closest to that flag between that Shrix and, and the Mizuno. Okay, so let's look at those numbers there. So we can see a touch more club head speed with the Mizuno. Uh, ball speed wise, a fraction more, probably just coming from that little bit of that club head speed, but very, very similar launch, pretty much identical. And you can see a spin on average is pretty identical as well. Tiny little bit more with the pro carry distance, absolutely identical to 189. Height, exactly the same. Land angle, pretty much identical. Okay, so we're going to kick things off five shots with the ZX7 into a flag. Let's add up all the total of feet from the pin of the five shots and we're doing we'll do exactly the same with the Mizuno C which is the lowest. Let's move into the 2 2 three.
Okay, so there's a batch of shots, five and five, and the winner is the Mizuno 223 has done the job. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. Post comments down below. Let me know which one you would be going for and why out of those two models, and hopefully catch you all very soon.